3D printing is a new technology which promises to transform manufacturing in the next decade. It's a way to produce complicated shapes in a highly personalised way in industries ranging from aerospace to medical equipment. Probably its most prominent proponent is Abe Reichenthal, a former Israeli Air Force technician who's now chief executive of US-based 3D systems, one of the biggest makers of 3D printing machines. Personally, I, I believe that it's the next big thing. I think that uh, it, it could uh, be as big as the steam engine was in its day, as big as the computer was in its day, uh, as big as the internet was in its day. And uh, I, I believe that this is the next disruptive technology that's going to change everything. It's going to change how we learn, it's going to change how we create, and it's going to change how we manufacture. Mr. Reichenthal has just launched what he says is the first truly mass market 3D printer. Called the Cube, it sells for about $1,300 and is targeted for use in schools and in the home. Tell us what this machine is doing and how it's doing it. Okay, Peter, so this is our uh, new Cube 3D printer. And what it does is it can take any digital design, slice it into thin layers, and feed each layer through the cartridge into uh, the melted filament and deposit it on top of itself one point at a time to print, in this case, a beautiful napkin ring holder. How, how long would that take to really make the whole thing? Okay, so uh, to print something like this at home, uh, if you printed uh, this particular uh, napkin holder, it would be about two and a half hours. If you uh, printed this uh, cute rook with all of its uh, interesting details and the spiral staircase on the inside, this would be about 45 minutes. Uh, and it's also very affordable. Uh, here you look at something that would cost you to uh, print at home about three dollars and fifty cents uh, and so I don't think you could buy something like this uh, for three dollars mm. and fifty cents in a toy store. However the uses of the technology go a lot further than small simple toys. There are thousands of companies around the world that successfully adapted 3D printing first and foremost for design, prototyping and testing. And more recently, there are hundreds of examples of actually moving it into the manufacturing floor. So whether it's uh, the F-18 that flies every day with some 90 parts printed on it, whether it's all the hearing aid companies that are benefiting from it, uh, or whether it's high-end automobiles that now have some printed parts uh, installed in them, 3D printing is becoming recognized as a flexible in viable manufacturing technology. At the moment, however, the technology still has limitations in terms of where it's used. While many thousands of different parts have been made with 3D printing, only a handful have been put into use where they have to withstand heavy stresses, such as in a car gearbox. Uh, you know, are we ready to uh, print directly parts that will go into a jet engine? Not so much, but can we print uh, the patterns that would then go into investment casting for potentially future jet engines? You bet. And so a lot of what we do today and the way that where we have seen significant increase in the adoption of 3D printing for manufacturing purposes is many times in the final indirect step in printing sacrificial patterns that then go into investment casting or into precious metal casting or into medical casting. Mr. Reichenthal believes that annual sales of 3D printing machines will go up from about half a billion dollars now to around 35 billion dollars in the next 10 years. While this seems a bit optimistic to many observers of what's still a fledgling business, it would appear that 3D printing does have the power to make all sorts of parts less expensively, more quickly and in a less environmentally harmful manner and so change the landscape of a wide range of industries. This is Peter Marsh, Financial Times.